Hi, this is Scott Cartwright. And this is Dr. Rudy Cartwright, the MS Health Coach. And we want to thank you for checking out this video. We get a lot of questions about what you can do to get rid of your multiple sclerosis symptoms. And heat intolerance is a big one, so we're going to tell you what might be causing some of your heat intolerance and what you can do about it. We really pride ourselves on bringing information to you that nobody else out there is talking about and hopefully for you this video will be no different. Before we jump into that we need to let you know a little bit about us. Uh, like I said my name is Scott Cartwright. I have a master's degree in public health. Uh, I uh, deal with people and their diseases all day on a daily basis and I'm also the creator and the founder of MS Health University. I put that site together because my wife has multiple sclerosis and we deal with the ups and downs of that disease on a daily basis. Dr. Carrad again. I'm a brain surgeon and an expert in multiple sclerosis. And if you're wondering how a brain surgeon becomes an expert in multiple sclerosis, well let me just tell you. I have over 35 years of training and experience and during that period of time I've seen my share of brain injuries and spinal cord injuries because of automobile accidents such as cars, trucks, um, you name it. And what occurs to the spinal cord and brain in those kind of injuries over a short period of time occurs in multiple sclerosis over an extended period of time. Now why am I so passionate about multiple sclerosis and the recoveries? Well let me just tell you. My lovely daughter-in-law was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis several years back while she was in the middle of her medical school training. And my son got on the phone and called me and told me about it and I said, don't fear, I know what to do about it, but let me go back to the library and brush up, which I did. And over a period of time, I put together a program that she followed and I'm happy to say that she finished her medical school training. And now she is in the middle of her residency training doing very well and that's where I was willing to leave it and then my son walked in one day and said dad you have to share this this information with others who are recovering from multiple sclerosis and I said no way Jose no way Jose because I'm not interested in the limelight but he kept hammering on me and hammering on me and hammering on me and I finally gave in and over a period of time I started to uh, put together programs for other recoverers who are doing quite well. And I want to share some of that information with you. And here is my um, uh, diploma in neurosurgery at Baylor College of Medicine. It's five years here. All right, great. So, like I said, we get a lot of questions about the different multiple sclerosis symptoms and heat intolerance is a big one. So before Dr. Cartwright lets us know what you can do about your heat intolerance, I need to let you know that Dr. Cartwright is a medical doctor with over 35 years of training and experience. But the information we're sharing with you today is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as medical advice. Dr. Cartwright has not seen you as a patient and cannot give you medical advice. So whatever you do, please be sure to consult your doctor before you make any changes to your medical routine. And with that, let's find out what you can do about your MS heat intolerance. Okay, let me just say again. My approach is to bring you scientific information that has been published in the medical literature. And as you can see, look at that first um, article up there. It gives you the journal that it appeared in and then it gives you the title of the, uh, of the uh, article which is Central Control of Thermogenesis in Mammals. You know, we're a mammal, we're mammals, the humans are mammals. And uh, thermogenesis is just the, you know, production of heat. And the reason we we have this production of heat is that we have to be at a certain temperature to function properly. If we get too hot, let's say 105, 106, 108, 110, that's bad for the body, especially the central nervous system, which is the brain, brain stem, and spinal cord. And also, if our body temperature gets too low, if it gets below 96, 94, 90, you know, you know 93, things start to really slow down. So we have to keep that body temperature at a certain, at a certain level, within a certain range, to be functioning properly. And I might just add is that we give the uh, 
I give the main point of the article, and I do that, which is written in in uh, bold blue here. And in this second article, it indicates that melatonin is very important in terms of your heat. During the day, it will keep the heat down. And as you know, melatonin and produced, you know, it's produced by a little organ of the brain called the pineal gland. Pineal gland produces melatonin. We subsequently found out that melatonin is also produced by the bowel. But the important thing is, is that it helps to do what? Lower your body temperature. Okay? All right, and then the last article, what is the CBT and HR? Okay, uh, heart rate, okay, and CBT is core body temperature. That is the overall temperature in which you are functioning. All right, and All melatonin right. helps to reduce, to regulate that. It helps to regulate that. Normally we think about re melatonin in terms of sleeping, but there, it, melatonin has some other good effects, and this is one of them. All right, great. Okay? All right. Now, another thing that we know is that the cerebellum, the organ of balance, we used to believe that that's all it, you know, it did was help you maintain your balance. But we now know that this cerebellum is important in a number of bodily functions. And one of them is you're maintaining uh, balance through the vestibular system. And so when the cerebellum is healthy, it can help you maintain your body temperature. Okay? So the vestibular system helps maintain body temperature? That's right. And the cerebellum and controls it, and that? And help the, the cerebellum participates in that effort. And we also know that the vestibular system is very important in terms of your cardiovascular system. And for example, when you get up out of a chair, the heart rate increases and your blood pressure uh, increases so that the brain and other uh, organs will get the appropriate blood flow. You don't have to think about that. It's all done automatically for you, and that's why we call it the autonomic nervous system. Well, the cerebellum helps regulate that. And so what they found out that when the cerebellum um, is not functioning properly, it cannot help you control your bodily temperature. It's well well published. And the other thing is, uh, as this uh, slide indicates, is that we know that gluten is toxic. Toxic to the cerebellum. And so um, what you want to do is stay away from gluten. Which is so, what? what? Which is gluten? is gluten, you get it in wheat, barley, or rye. Okay? You want to stay away from that so that you can help control the symptoms of heat intolerance. And so that's gluten if it's in wheat, barley, or rice. So we're talking about breads and pastas and things like that. They all have gluten in them. They all have gluten in them. And so you want, because this gluten is toxic to the cerebellum, and you want to control the multiple sclerosis symptom of heat intolerance, then you would stay away from the gluten. You want to keep the cerebellum as healthy as possible. You all want, also want to keep your vestibular system as healthy as possible. All right, great. Okay? So what are the action steps? We want you to take vitamin D3 5,000 to 10,000 interna international units every day. Now on the slides, uh, before this slide, I did not put up that. What happens is, is that this vitamin D3 helps to keep the vestibular system functioning properly. Okay? And that's why that's important. Of course, I want you to take melatonin 3 milligrams daily. And then don't worry about getting sleepy during the day. Pretty soon you'll, you'll, um, you'll accommodate to that and this, you'll find out it will pay big dividends um, throughout your recovery from the symptom of heat intolerance. And you could, or you could take the melatonin at night. I'm supposing. Yeah, you can take it at night, and that that's a good thing. But I want you not only to take it at night, but when you get up in the morning, take the melatonin. Then do your exercising. 
and you'll find out that that is a good way to approach your the M multiple sclerosis symptom of heat intolerance. All right, great. And of course, I want you to stay away from gluten. Don't eat anything with wheat, barley, or rye, and uh, you'll get better. Perfect. Perfect. So we hope you like this information. We put out videos like this all the time. We have a lot more videos like this if you want to check them out at www.mshealthuniversity.com. There's also a link to it in the description section. So if you want to know more, just visit us there. We hope you got a lot out of this information and keep your eye out for future videos coming out from us. So until then, take good care and here's to your health.